in the repair shop today. This is always a nerve-wracking time. Dom's in a spin. I do feel a little bit like a big kid on his birthday, just unwrapping his presents, like, frantically trying to get inside, trying to have a look. Restoring childhood memories from 60 years ago. Ah, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. While Brenton commits a miniature murder... I've cut the head off a vet. ..to get a Victorian Sporting Heroes trophy back to prize-winning form. Right. The moment of truth. And there we go, we've got a head. But first, Cassie and Sue Day from Swindon are hoping maestro Pete Woods can lend his musical ear and very specialist skills to a cherished brass instrument that's lost its luster. Hello. Hi, I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Cassie. Cassie. Hi, I'm Sue. All right, Sue. And this is Pete. Hi, Pete. Hi. Hi, yeah. <laughs> right. So, what we got in the box? We have a trumpet. Here we go. So, tell us about the trumpet, please. So, the trumpet belonged to my granddad. OK. So, my mum's dad. So, what was your dad's name? Dennis. Dennis. Yeah. So, tell us about your dad playing the trumpet. Um, my dad used to play this every New Year's Eve. It was used to be a bit of a family tradition that he would get the trumpet out... Right. ..to play Old Lang Syne, and then he used to go up and down the street with it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, heard it, you heard it right. What, he'd come out of the house? Yeah, he'd come out of the house, and then he'd get the trumpet, and then all the neighbours would come out, and everybody following behind him, yeah. playing that. And he's playing that? Yeah. He sounds like a bit of a character, your dad, then. He was a bit of a character, yeah. Do you remember your granddad then? Yeah. What was he like, then, as a granddad? Hilarious. He was the best. So, bless him, but, yeah, miss him terribly, but, yeah. yeah. He was just the nicest, yeah, he was great. When my nan died... What? ..my granddad stopped playing this yeah. every New Year's Eve and didn't oh, carry wow. it on. So yeah. Dennis stopped playing when his wife passed away? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And then it just kind of became a kind of ornament. So when was the last time this was played? Probably about 28 years ago. Wow. So I've wow. never heard it play, no. but it's been a bit of a legend in the household. So every year, Mum yeah, tells yeah. the story of right. round about now, this is what Grandad will be doing. Yeah. So every year we've been brought up with the story of Grandad playing Old Lang Syne mm. on the trumpet. I don't have a lot of things that um, are left of his, and I just think it would be really nice to try and restart the tradition. My son-in-law can now play the trumpet. Carry on that tradition. Yeah. Pete, what do you reckon? It could be fixed? It can be fixed. It was silver plated originally. Was it? See the silver there? Where well, it's oh, been yeah, cleaned. All the silver plating's come off. Mm. Oh. Yeah, what colour do you remember it? I can remember it being shiny. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He would have had this all, you know, looked after, oiled and everything else, and he'd probably be saying, You've let that get into a state. Shame on you. <laughs> oh. It's about time you got <laughs> it about time you got it repaired. <laughs> Well, listen, um, beautiful story, and we're going to get this sorted for you. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you, you for bringing much. this in. Thank, thank you. you very okay? much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank bye you. Bye. 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 We really hope that he can get the trumpet to work again so that we can start up the family tradition again with Nathan, my future son-in-law, to do it. Having it actually being brought to life would just be... Oh, it would just be magical, I think. That means a lot. I bet this has seen some times, haven't it? Yeah, you're right there, mate. So yeah. what you've got to do to this, then? Basically, put that back on. That looks a bit bent to me, doesn't it? Is it that needs twisted? just a little bit of straightening. It's a mouth bite. We've got to do things like cleaning out the valves. Oh, that's not meant to stick down like that, it's is it? It's not meant to stick down. It's meant to come straight up. OK. Mouthpiece is jammed in. Right. Should come out. It's going to need a good cleaning, so we'll give it an acid clean because inside will be filthy and that affects the sound. Right, so you've got to clean the inside. Got to clean the inside. It's a good plan. Lovely. Oh, Cheers, mate. Right, we've got quite a bit of work to do on this trumpet. 
First thing I've got to do now is disassemble it. We're just trying to get this valve out now, which seems to be completely stuck. These divert the air round, making the trumpet slightly longer by a half note, a full note, and one and a half notes. This allows you to get all the different notes on the trumpet. So all we've got to do now is try and get them out. Two out, just one more to go that isn't having it. So we've just got to um, convince it that it wants to come out, and it has. That's one job done. Now we're going to try and remove the mouthpiece. This really has taken some punishment. It's quite normal if the mouthpiece gets stuck, what people tend to do is put a pair of pliers on them and they twist it. And, of course, the first thing it does, it twists the whole thing off. So we see quite a few of these. It's quite normal, especially for kids. They sit there going and wonder why it gets jammed. <laughs> Now I'm going to use the mouthpiece puller to get the mouthpiece out, hopefully. Put it on there. It's got two legs that go each side onto the brass receiver. Pull it up. Success. <laughs> Hold it up to the light, it's absolutely filthy. Nice working on this because there's a long family tradition. Cassie and Sue remember their grandfather and dad enjoy playing it and it entertained from what we hear the whole street. So I mean it was a good time as had by all. I've got to do is get the rest of the trumpet apart so I can get it through the acid, get it clean so I can really start to work on it. As Pete struggles to dismantle the trumpet, outside another item that brought joy to the lives of its owners. You okay? Hey. Nice to see you. Marlon Russell and her sister Margot from Eastbourne are here to meet metal expert Dominic Chinea. What's in the boot? What have you got? I can't surprise, wait to see. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> They've brought a childhood favourite that's entertained three generations of their family. Brilliant. Let's go inside. I'm so intrigued by this. It looks amazing. What, what is it? It's a roundabout. <laughs> can you explain how does it work? <laughs> right. You get a seat either side. Oh, I see. oh OK. All right. If you sit in here, yeah. one sits that side. Sure. And then you put one hand there, one hand here, so and you pull it towards you, oh. and it will go round. Cool, I bet you could get some speed up on this. You oh. can. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. Where on earth did you get it from? Mother bought it for us when we were... I was about four and you were six. Six, something like right. that. And we just played with it all the time, didn't we? It was the best toy we had. Yes. Was it? Yes. I can, I can could, completely we, see why. We were the most popular people in the street. Everyone was yeah. queuing up at the gate because they wanted Literally to come on the road. Literally, to have a go. We used to charge them penny seat for go. No, you didn't. It, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd pay a penny to go on it. If, <laughs> I, if I could fit in it, I would, yeah. <laughs> I'd be queuing up. <laughs> it looks like it's been well used. I can completely yes. understand now yes. why the paint's so worn yeah. off. We would love our children, grandchildren, and, and great-grandchildren to have up the again. fun yes. that we used yeah. to have. Yes. Good. Really would. It's got to be used. Definitely. I bet your mum had no idea when she bought this that you, it was going to last this long and you were going to still have it. I think she'd be oh, thrilled yeah. to bits. Yeah. To Do you see? think she would? She yeah. would. She picked the right toy. She did. Absolutely. <laughs> You've got that right. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. idealised our mum. She was brilliant. We had so much fun with her. She was a really good mum, wasn't she? Yeah. Oh. Right, well, leave this with me and I will do my best to get this apart and try and get it back to being usable again. OK, Brilliant. thank you, thank you very much. Thank nice you. To meet you. Lovely really to meet nice. you both. Thank you. Thank you. When the roundabout's fixed, we'll be able to have our barbecues with all the toys out 
and watch the grandchildren fighting to have a go on it. <laughs> we won't charge them a penny, no. will we? <laughs> but we'll have a ride on it ourselves, I'm sure. Marilyn and Margot have had this roundabout for a long time, and it's clearly had quite a life and done a lot of miles. Structurally, it's actually... It looks OK. One thing that it does need some help with uh, is cosmetics. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to strip all this paint off and repaint it, but once this is all pristine and glossy and shiny again, it really is going to look amazing. This paint's got a weird texture. I don't know about that, but... Right, there's one. OK, same again with this one, and I've just got to carry on now until the whole thing is completely broken into pieces. As Dom battles to dismantle the magic roundabout, Pete has finished breaking apart the trumpet that welcomed in decades of new years and can now give the brass a bath. I've got some acid here now that'll loosen all the muck. It's not going to take long, it's quite mild acid. We can then wash it through and give it a good brush. With the brass now sparkling clean, Pete can address the copious dents that mar both the sound and the appearance of the trumpet. Now it's time to have a, a little go at the bell and trying to sort out all the big dents. Well, obviously, he's seen a little bit of damage during these New Year's Eve celebrations. So, better get on and get to work and get rid of these dents. We put it on the dolly here. We've got several of these. Trumpets are always different shapes from different manufacturers. So you have to sort of balance between the two. You might get one that fits around the bottom, another one that fits just there. The dolly is the metal forber which provides a flat surface to hammer the brass against. We're finished now with the bell dolly, which obviously only goes up to about there. We've now got to get all these dents out. So we use a longer tapered one and we can start with a hammer now and get rid of some of the large dents. See then called a burnisher. With this, I'm actually just physically pushing the metal into place. You can move it about, but you don't expand it, which is great. They're gradually coming out, all the dents. Just now, keep at it, keep slugging away until all the dents are gone. With the brass finally free of dents, Pete can now rebuild the instrument. It's a little bit fiddly. Things tend to fall all over the place. So to hold it in place, we use the tie-in wire. It's all wired up now, so we're ready to start soldering. Right, that's it. All soldered up now. We can get it off to the platers. Then we'll get it back, give it a final shine up, and make sure it works. Pete may be getting ready to sound the victory call, but outside, items are still arriving. Jill Lee from Burnley... Hello there. Hello. ..has brought a very unusual piece of sporting history for the winning team of silversmith Brenton West and leather expert Susie Fletcher. So what did you bring in? Oh, this is what we call a champion's belt. Champion's belt? Oh, wow. It's the pedestrian champion of England belt. Pedestrian? Pedestrian. Pedestrian. Is that like crossing the road sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a speed walker. It's a bit like the Olympic sport where they 
walking really, really fast. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and it's from my three greats grandfather, who won it in 1851. He was called James Searles. He speed walked a thousand miles in a thousand hours, a thousand half miles in a thousand half hours, and a thousand quarter miles in a thousand quarter hours. Wow. And it took him from July to September. Wow. So who made this belt, or how did this belt come about? It was presented to him when he'd finished this challenge. He won this, a cup, and £250. A lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. Equivalent to about £10,000 in today's oh. money. Yeah. So, so do you have this interest in walking? Uh, no. <laughs> well, only the dog. OK. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like us to do to the belt? Really just to sort of, I suppose, in a way, tidy it up, repair where the lettering's coming okay. off. And he's lost his head there. Yeah, OK. Um, and the, the actual belt itself is... Yes. A little is, tired. It's very tired. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very tired. Yeah. I mean, you don't want it to look as new, do no, you? Because no. it's, it's just so historical. Yes, absolutely. What does this belt symbolise to you? Strength of character more than anything. I mean, can you imagine doing something like that? I mean, I just can't. No, I can't either. <laughs> Thank well. you very much for bringing it in, and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much for looking at it. Thanks, Jill. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Jill. It's Bye -bye. been a pleasure meeting Bye -bye. you. Okay. All the family know of, of James Searles and very proud of him because he was such a strength and compared very much to an Olympian of today, I suppose, yes. During the 19th century, pedestrianism was a hugely popular spectator sport throughout Britain, with enormous cash prizes on offer. Born in 1819, James Searles became one of the most celebrated pedestrians, his appearances drawing crowds of thousands. It's rather nice, isn't it? It's absolutely lovely, but it's had a bit of a Long life, 170 odd years, and it's mm. it's showing it now. Yeah, unfortunately, it is. It um, is. I envisage taking the silver off of here. Yeah, perfect. And handing you the bendy bits. Is that? Yeah, that would be super. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This velvet needs to be really cleaned up. Yeah. Um, all that needs to be lined. Okay, I'll get that to my bench, and uh, I'll be over as soon as I've got it apart. Sounds perfect. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. I'm just going to eat, try and ease this off. And this is seeing the light of day for the first time in 170 odd years. I can start to clean that up and uh, get the rest of these letters off and get those made. <laughs> Rather more sturdy is the jaunty 1950s roundabout being overhauled by Dom. So a lot of these pieces I can actually sand down by hand, which is really good, nice gentle way of doing it. Some of the areas are really tricky, there's lots of nooks and crannies that I can't get into, so a sandblaster is the perfect tool for that. Sandblasting may look like a very modern process, but it's actually been around for 150 years, patented in America in 1870. It's a fast and efficient way of cleaning metal surfaces, something that would have taken Dom hours by hand. You can see what a fantastic job sandblasting does. Just leaves me with a perfect, clean, solid steel finish, which is a great base for the paint. Perfect. So I've just got a few last bits to do on this piece, and then I've got the mountain of other bits to do as well.
Okay, so now I've got all of the bits of the merry-go-round all stripped off and back to bare metal, which is great. There's actually no real rust or anything like that. That's, that's very good news. The only thing that I have to really deal with is this piece of tube on both sides. This round tube has become oval um, from that piece basically being in there and just sort of bashing back and forwards for so long. And I don't want to dare risk this not being safe. So I need to fix this. Now I've got that cut, that's removed a bit of material and that's actually given me a gap that then I can clamp the two sides together and then that will reduce that movement. Now I just need to get a weld on there to hold it all in place. Okay, hopefully I haven't welded it all together. Brilliant. Perfect. That's so much better. Still a little bit of play there, so it's nice and easy to slide that in and out, but not too much. So I have no worries about that not being safe. I'm painting the seats for the merry-go-round separately to the rest of the pieces because I'm using a different paint for these, which is going to be an interesting one. It's a new one on me. Originally, the paint had almost like they put an additive in the paint or something like that to make it wrinkle up. And I can only assume that is to give it more grip, basically, to make it a little bit non-slip. So when you're spinning around on the merry-go-round, you don't fly out the seat. Perfect, that has gone on really well and it's actually already started to wrinkle up, which is brilliant. I do need to leave that to dry for a good few hours though, so it goes nice and hard. So far, so good. Before I sandblasted everything off, I took really accurate notes and drawings and pictures of all of the original paint and where that all was. So now I need to mask up the areas that I want to stay white in preparation to spray the red on. Okay, brilliant. That's all gone really well. I just need to let that dry and then I can unmask it all. That's the fun bit. Across the workshop, it's with great fanfare that Jay's taken a delivery for musical master Pete. How you doing, Pete? All right, Jay. How's you? I'm good. Just got this back from the platers. Yeah. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. It's, a bit it's too shiny, isn't it? It's going to be shiny, but we've got to now take it back to the same as when Dennis had it. Oh, a lot of the silver had worn off, so I'm just going to polish it off a bit. So oh, okay. it's back to looking like... Like that? Like that, where you've got a bit of brass showing through and all this, all the normal wear. I'm with you. So it looks exactly the same as I knew it. All right. Happy days. Onwards. Yes, backwards. I'm using just an ordinary brass polish. The silver... It's all been put on with a brush, so it's, it's not over heavy. Been quite a nice job actually repairing this. It's an old semi hand built one. So it's nice putting back together something that somebody made all that time ago. For decades, this trumpet heralded the new year for Sue Day's family. But its bright, beautiful sound 
had been silenced by the march of time. Now Sue's return to the repair shop, accompanied by her daughter Cassie and soon-to-be son-in-law Nathan, who is hoping to revive that family tradition. The trumpet has got a real link to my dad. I don't have many things left of my dad anymore, so it will be really special. Hello. Hi, yeah. Sue. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thank Hiya. you. Hiya. All right. Uh, Nathan. This is Nathan. Oh, Nathan. Nice to meet you. Hiya. Yeah. Right. So, who's Nathan then? Nathan is my other daughter's boyfriend. Oh. Yes. And he's going to continue the tradition? Yes, he's going to play the trumpet. Try to. Try to. How do you feel about it? There's a lot of pressure on this, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you ladies feeling? Excited. Excited? Yeah. Nervous. OK. And nervous? Yeah, I just want to see it working and looking good, and so it reminds me of my dad. We're quite excited for you guys to see this, actually, aren't we? Yeah. Are we? Yeah. 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 Shall we show you? Yes, Let's please. Go yeah? Yeah. OK. God! It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Yeah. Thank you so much. It's this young man here. Yeah. Thank you very much for doing that. It's, um, my dad's up there now, looking down at this, and yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'll be really glad. No. Thank you very much. It's That's uh, right. pleasure. Yeah. He would be now sort of saying, "Right, well, that's how it's. That's how it needs to stay. It needs to stay." Yeah. 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 I can't believe it. No. I can't believe it. <laughs> Just shocked. Mm. Yes. No. <laughs> pressure. I feel oh. sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hear it playing now. Yeah. Could you do us a little tune now? Is that yeah. just a little something? I can give it a go. Thank I'm you. sure I can. All right. Yeah, it just brings back all the memories. Just wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Anything to continue the family tradition. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for bringing yeah, it. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pete. Thank you very much. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank Lovely. You thank you. Thanks very All much. Right. Bye. Yeah. I was shocked, I was amazed, I was... I can't believe it's the same trumpet. I've never, ever seen it looking so good. I've only ever seen it in the state that we bought it in, it. and to see it like this and to see how happy it's made my mum is just incredible, and it's yeah. bringing back all those memories mm. of, of Grandad, so... and torn Victorian speed walking trophy, free of its silver plaques, is now in the capable hands of Susie. What I'm thinking about is what's my best approach here? It's clear that I'm going to have to line this velvet with something, but the first thing I need to do is clean up the velvet in preparation for backing. The actual belt is so fragile that there is absolutely no room for mistakes here. Meanwhile, Brenton is getting the silver letters to look champion again. I'm just establishing what I need to do to re uh, repair the various parts before I put them back on. The champion is missing the P and the I and some of the M. Now, I'm going to have to draw those out on a piece of paper, stick that to a piece of silver, and then cut those out and solder those into that to make the word champion. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think that looks pretty good. That spells the word champion it's in a similar style. I've got to polish that up a bit, solder it together, and then that's ready to go back on the belt. Now I've got the belt completely taken apart, I can see actually how much damage there is on the velvet. It's absolutely peppered with holes and uh, major tears where it's been folded back. But I can now go ahead and line this with a very lightweight material. It's strong enough to give everything a lot more strength but it's not so thick that it's gonna bulk everything up too much. I'm going to just brush lightly the glue onto the velvet. And then once the, it's all got a little bit tacky, I can press the two pieces of fabric together. Good. So what I need to do now is finish off by trimming it up. At his workbench, Brenton faces the unusual task of replacing the champion's missing head on one of the belt's silver plaques, and he's calling on some unusual props to help. I've got some children's toys. I've cut the head off a vet, and I'm going to try and cast that in silver, which gives me something um, to work on. So I'm going to push this head into some casting sand. Hopefully, when I remove it, it will leave an impression that I can then pour the molten silver into. Right. The moment of truth. See if I can get this out without, without uh, damaging the impression that I've made. It's very hard to tell whether this has worked or not. I've just got to pour some silver and see what happens. And there we go, we've got a, uh, we've got a head. I've now got to cut the excess silver off the back and start carving the hair a bit and making it look a bit more like James. So there's a bit of work to do yet. Over on the metal workbench, Dom's ready for the big reveal, eager to see if hours of meticulous taping has recreated the bold pattern on the 1950s roundabout. This is always a nerve-wracking time. No matter how careful I try and mask things up, the overspray from the paint just gets everywhere. Just need to be so careful now. This is a special tape that should give me a nice clean edge. Brilliant. Yes, look at that. Fantastic. That's so smart. I love those two colours together. It's like a big candy cane. That looks really, really good. Wrap this up so well, now I can't get it off. I do feel a little bit like a big kid on his birthday, just unwrapping his presents, trying to have a look. I'm desperate to see how this has all come out. Ah, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So Marilyn and Margot's grandkids have only ever seen this merry-go-round in the shed in its sorry state that it was when it arrived. So they are going to go mad when they see this. It's going to look brand new and they're finally going to get to have a go at it. I can't wait.
60 years ago, two little sisters first laid eyes on what was to become a favorite childhood toy. In Eastbourne, those sisters, Marlon and Margot, are about to come face to face with it, as it would have looked all those years ago. And they're sharing the moment with two other little girls, their granddaughters. The roundabout was really rusty, it'd been well used over the years. I hope Don has made it safe for us. We had so much fun on the roundabout. It would be just lovely to sit in the garden and watch these two sisters doing the same thing. Find the pole. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready. You ready. count. Come count. On. Three, Three two, two, one. Oh, wow. Hey, that looks brilliant. <gasps> it's good. Oh, that's it is yeah. good. Just so wonderful. Oh, what do you think, Emily? Good, good. Ready? Go! Ready? Go! 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 Wow. Go! Go! Oh, steady now! <laughs> faster, faster! Oh, that's lovely! Wow! <laughs> when the blanket came off, it was sparkling, Amazing. wasn't it? It was, it was just it was like new. lovely. I bet my mum's looking down up there, isn't she? Yeah. Well, yeah. She'd have probably have jumped on it as well. <laughs> Is it Argo? <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> hey, good oh, job, where's your Good job, Marilyn. Yeah! We're not! Oh, this is not <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, Marilyn! Oh, that was oh, good that fun. That was lovely fun. Back at the repair shop, Susie is in the final stages of putting the champion Speedwalker belt back together, 170 years after it was awarded to Victorian sporting legend James Sells. I've finished gluing the backing onto the velvet of the belt. It feels really strong, and I know I've got full confidence now that when I mount the metal plating back on, this can take the strain. Really beginning to come together. All I have to do now is to sew the backing piece of leather on to hide all of the pins that's holding the metalwork on the front. I think the final result is going to be really rather lovely. When the prize belt arrived in the repair shop, it was anything but champion with missing letters, a headless figure, and fragile fabric. Now James Searle's great-great-great-granddaughter, Jill, has returned to the barn to reclaim this piece of sporting history. Considering it's 150 years old, it's amazing that it survived that long, but we want it to last another 150 years, so to have it repaired will mean a lot. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Hello, Jill. Hi, Jill. Hello. Lovely to see you again. It's lovely to see you. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you feeling? Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll be amazing because I've got every confidence in me. <laughs> That's nice. That's a good start. It's a good start, yeah. Well, let's see, shall we? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Oh, you've done a super job. That is amazing. How did you do that? Oh, he's got his head back. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, that's just right. Just right. Oh, it's lovely. I'm in awe of you. I really am. <laughs> it was yeah. what you were hoping for, is it? Absolutely, yes. And yeah. more so. And yeah. more so, yeah. Yeah. It's been absolutely fascinating to hear about all of James's achievements. And, and thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Right. It's yours okay. to take away. Lovely. Thank bye you bye. very much. Take bye. care. Bye. bye bye. Well done. Well done, you. <laughs> 
think Susie and Brenton have done an absolutely fantastic job. As far as James is concerned, it's wonderful that we'll be able to keep it for years and years and years, um, through lots of generations of the family, so that his legacy never dies. So it's great, absolutely wonderful.